don't be stupid and give up everything. And we got one of them owners that's stupid. So I'm just like, yeah. leave this motherfucker alone, man. Let's just go on a route that like we didn't even see Deshaun out there. Let's I leave feel like if, if you guys wanted to get Deshaun, you'd have to give up most of your defense. Most of it? No. Nah, you mean picks? A uh, piece and some, some picks? Yeah. Probably. But you I don't know, want to deal with that. Yeah. But you know what I would like to see? I would like to see um, Deshaun Watson go and play for Eric B. Enemy. And speaking of it, speaking of Eric B. Enemy, his agent said that there needs to be more black coaches. So let me read it. Go line football. Go line football. Who represents Eric B. Enemy on MLK Day is what he wrote. He put at the NFL should be a shame that only at this point there's only two jobs remaining. And then he says one after the Eagles hire J. M. I guess that's the guy from um, Josh McDaniels. Yeah, yeah, from um, New England. Zero black coaches hires. Or even second interviews. No coaches coaching in conference championship and currently connected to either of these two jobs. Now, I, I swear I said this before I seen this yesterday. And I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm like, and we know the enemy, obviously he's still coaching for the Chiefs. But you look at all these guys, all these on the um, sideline of the NFL, you see a lot of black coaches now. You know what I mean? Linebackers, former linebackers, former running backs, former quarterbacks, former wide receivers. And it seems like the NFL is not giving in their just due once again, despite the Rooney rule. And what's reaffirming it is when I listen to some of these beat writers and they evaluate coaches, when I hear them bring up a lot of the black coaches, it's always kind of like undermined, like, oh, you know, well, he didn't do this or he didn't call plays or this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yo, these dudes, when you look at the enemy, he's fucking overqualified at this point. He's sitting beside Andy Reid. It's that third and AFC championship game. He He's the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. So a lot of shit that you see, I'm sure he's designing those concepts and shit. You know what I mean? They're helping in some way doing that. So... He's qualified. Deuce Daly, you know what I mean? Um, championship with the Steelers in 05. Running back, you know, top, top five Eagles running back of all time. A fucking leader of men. Like, anybody could tell you. Anybody that's going to see this is going to tell you, Deuce is that dude. I, I watched a few of his press conferences. you like, yo, this is a guy you want to bring in front of your little league team or something or your high school team or your college team. It's just fucking natural with Deuce. And I think it's a travesty that... The Eagles only looked at him and no other teams. And Eric Bieniemy doesn't have a job yet. He should have had one last year, but that's just my opinion on it. It's a, it's a dirty game they're playing right now because you got the Rooney Rule in place, which allows NFL teams or, or minority candidates, in particular black coaches, to go out here and and um, uh, interview for mm-hmm. jobs. But you got them interviewing as some of them are still competing, so they can't be hired. And you got teams right up underneath just hiring fucking people. Yeah. What pissed me off today was, on my squad, we went and signed Marty Herning as our GM. And coincidentally enough, he was with Ron Rivera in Carolina. Oh, yeah. yeah. What they do is they just hire and pick around their fucking friends. Oh, yeah. Well, hmm, yeah. that must be very convenient and very nice if your friend's sitting here and your friend's sitting here and your friend's sitting here and y'all look just alike and y'all done this and done this together. It's easy for y'all to go ahead and pick your friends. It ain't no real fucking things going on. It's who you know, not what you know. That's clear, yeah, right? Very true. When you look at a B enemy, it makes absolutely no sense why he's not a coach. And he's going to be sitting right next to Andy Reid, coaching probably the most highly rated offense again <laughs> for the next year with threats of going to the Super Bowl and potentially three-peating again next year. When you say he calls the when, when he runs the offense, you look at the most prolific offense that we probably have ever seen. Yeah. And he's calling the shots. Now, Andy Reid might be going, yeah, let's pull that trigger, that trigger, that trigger. But he's the mastermind boiling this up. And what it ultimately comes to is they're going to have to change this rule because now we're seeing a bunch of assistant coaches. And you brought up Deuce Staley. I salute you with that. I'm going to bring up another man, Byron Leftwich. Yeah. Last year had Jameis Winston as the number one passer in the league, albeit Jameis Winston leading the leading interceptions. That ain't got nothing to do with Byron left with scheme. The motherfuckers were open. He ain't hit the right receivers. D'Amico Ryan's doing, too. D'Amico yeah. Ryan's yeah. doing his thing. You see what he's doing. It's just a number of coaches. What Deuce Staley's doing in Philly. What uh, You got four assistant coaches in Tampa Bay doing their thing. People in KC. Uh, Anthony Lynn out in, in, in San Diego. Even though... Miami. Oh, yeah. What's my man in Miami's name? Um, the black coach? Yeah. Damn. What's his name? I can't believe it. For, for something with an F, is it no? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, definitely I definitely understand um, you know, where you guys are coming from with that whole situation. Brian Flores, Flores, Flores yeah. Brian Flores. There we go. Indeed. But it's it's so much, man, that that doesn't get talked about. It's it's one of those, all right, we're gonna give them just a little bit. We'll let them hear uh 
uh, let, lift every voice and sing on Sundays. We'll talk about injustice. We'll do this, but we won't move the needle any further for them to advance in this motherfucker, even though it's black athletes for the majority because it's white athletes doing anything and, and other races doing anything in the NFL too. Mm -hmm. But when you look out there and you look at the personalities, you tell me what color they are. That's very Running true. the league. And, and it, it's about that time that we just start taking control. I don't know what can be done further, but... Like you said, they got to they gotta make it mandatory. Yeah. And I mean that the league stays at a capacity of certain black coaches, certain black GMs. I don't mm -hmm. think they should be able to hire coaches during season. I don't like that shit. Right. You can have your, some of your people in place, but I think just like for the all season or no, like oh, don't want to see. Yeah, you got oh, yeah. coaches out here still right. hiring coaches, and you got people that can't even be hired yet. That's not cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The enemy can't be hired right now. Would he be hired if KC wasn't in the playoffs? Who knows? But they just sucking their people. They they interviewing them, but they ain't even giving them the due diligence to go. Yeah, I like him. Let me wait till after the season and hire him. No, we don't know what's going on in Philly. We don't know what's going on in Detroit. And I think it's one. We don't know what's going on in. It's only two teams left now. So Detroit, Detroit got Detroit. their coach. Yeah. Oh no, Detroit got it. Mm -hmm. So I forgot what they got. They got somebody. It's Philly and uh, somebody else. I think Houston got their coach too. So mm -hmm. it's only mm -hmm. two teams left. The Chargers. The Chargers got their. coach. Chargers got their coach. Yep. So it's I mean, the Eagles and one other team. And then none of them are black. It's crazy. Man. Vienna, man, I mean, there's a lot of speculation that Andy Reid did put a statement out today where he was pretty much um, insinuating that he wanted. Um, the enemy to end up on the Eagles or in the NFC in particular. And I thought that was pretty dope trying to get him that Eagles job. But at the end of the day, they're going to pick who they think at this point. They, I mean, the Eagles then had a nine hour conversation with Josh McDaniel. So everybody's pointing there. But in the meantime, we interviewing more people. So we should see. I thought as soon as uh, Peterson went out, I was like, all right, the enemy going to be in there. Yeah. It just makes sense. The Andy Reid connection, you know, he played for the Eagles before. You know, he's working closely with an ex-Eagle quarterback, Mike Kafka, who was another guy that's on the rise. He's a white dude, but he's on the rise, too. You remember Mike Kafka, right? Yeah. The, the guy we picked up. So, yeah, man, we'll see, though. We'll see. What's your thoughts on it, though, Vic? What's your thoughts on it? I think it's, it's exactly as you guys said. Like, it's just a whole bunch of um, sucking going on, to be honest. Like, I, I, brought, up, I brought up a point where I, when I was playing football, I wasn't. I'm not gonna say I was one of the best, but I was. I used to do my thing on the football field. Mm -hmm. But the people that had sponsor parents always got first place, first dibs. And you see, I feel like you see it a lot in the NFL too. Like when somebody, when a GM, when you hire a GM that, like you said, with Ron, Ron Rivera, piss me off. They have that connection, and they don't. They want to see their boy eat. Not. They don't want to see the team eat. They want to yeah. see their boy eat. Right. Yeah. And I think that's real twisted. That's real fucked up. If you have a pro, a coach, a prolific coach who is in the top, who has the top three offense in in three years, not three, mm -hmm. coaching, says he wants to be a head coach, and you're not giving him no looks. I think that's fu that's fucked up, and a whole bunch. Of, uh, I want to see a change, right? And I want to see which I want to see. Now, which team is going to onset that change? Because yeah. it's, it's coming. It's coming soon, but it's not coming soon enough. Yeah, I'm over that narrative, man. It's a soon, but not soon enough. And I'm not talking and getting at you because you just you expressing the same sentiments all the mother motherfuckers expressing. Like, mm -hmm. it's coming soon, but not soon enough. And they just give us these backwards ass achievement awards, like these participation awards that think we're supposed to be all right with it. Like, right. nah, we need power and ownership within the NFL. We need to showcase some of these brains and some of these highly intelligent men that we have out here leading these franchises. Now we see women advancement within the sports and I love it. We're going to talk about that um, later on. I, it's a, I think it's a great thing that we're starting to see different things within sports, but this lack of black coaching is absolutely disgusting. You talk about yeah. a couple of years back with Mike Tomlin being one of the greatest coaches we've ever seen, potentially talking about being out of the Steelers when they never fire coaches and he's never had a losing season. It's the kind of yeah. shit we deal with that other coaches don't. It is. It's a shame. Now, the NFL, it, what makes it even more crazy just to, to uh, end off on this, I was trying to look at the percentage of black NFL players. My phone is moving real slow right now. But I would just guess, all right, what's this? It's about 68 to 70%. 68% African-American. Hmm. And that that's like, come on, man. You, that means you're dominating, yes. you know what I mean, that mm -hmm. industry. And you mean to tell me that you, you can't move up and call the X's and O's? Come on, man. There's yeah. something going on. And I mean, I would... I would